Hey guys, welcome back and thanks for tuning in to my review of the Gerber Propel Downrange Auto. This knife is a version of the Propel series which has been with Gerber for a little while now, several years I think. Uh, I believe they had a spring assisted version of it now, but here we have the auto version in desert tan. And it's also available in black. And I think the desert tan is relatively new. But we're going to talk all about this knife today. Gerber did send this one my way for review several months ago. They've been patient with me as I've been uh, testing it thoroughly and giving it lots of thought, comparing it against other auto knives and preparing for this review. So thanks to Gerber and thanks to you guys for being patient and waiting for it. We've got a lot to talk about in regards to this knife. We're going to compare it against a handful of other very good auto knives, see how this one stacks up against them. So let's get into it, covering some of the materials first off. Portland, Oregon, USA is where this one is made, which is a huge win, number one, okay? Made in USA, I'm always happy to see that when I can get it. S30V, also gigantic win for this knife. Great steel, fantastic steel, and Gerber's treatment of it is clearly very good, as I'll show you in some of the testing that I'll roll in periodically throughout this video. Um, it slices, it chops, not chops, but it slices really well, those teeth. Man, yeah, say what you will about serrations. And I'll agree with you, for the most part, they're hard to resharpen. But dang, man, do they work hard. They get the work of, I don't know, dude, they, they work faster than the plain edge does. I'll tell you that right now. And that's kind of what they're designed to do, right? So I think this knife is only available in the part serrated Tonto. I'd love to see it in a full, I don't know, drop point or something like that, full plain edge drop point. Uh, it would be an even bigger win then, and probably more of you guys would buy it. Uh, those of you who are kind of EDC knife guys, for sure. Uh, this is not really, you know, designed to be just an EDC knife for the standard everyday dude. This is something that's going to be definitely targeted at uh, your military and perhaps police. Um, it's, it's really kind of made for that purpose and the name definitely, you know, harkens to that, the downrange. So let's keep that in mind as we evaluate this knife. It's definitely targeted at military. Now the, the color, the G10 color there, also denotes that and it is nicely textured pretty nice and aggressive g10 it's not faux g10 that stuff that's molded to look like it and ends up being way more slick than actual g10 it is quite quite aggressive um, not cold steel aggressive in the standard grip there but uh, once you add in these gigantic grooves that they cut into it then it becomes far more aggressive and actually really good in hand and I can see this retaining very well in gloved hands so that's a huge win to me uh, repositionable pocket clip it looks like so we've got it here on this side you can put put it to there if you want to you can also set it up there if you like tip down instead that's a huge win I mean it would be kind of difficult to put it here obviously with these mechanisms that you need to operate so having it in those positions makes a lot of sense you also have what potentially could be a nice striking surface right here. Okay, it's a nice sharp corner, not too sharp, and it's even fairly, you know, tumbled right here. I won't say rounded, but tumbled, uh, these, these edges right there. So it's not gonna dig into your hand and give you scrapes and cuts as you're reaching into your pocket for it. But I can see that breaking glass, perhaps, uh, subduing um, folks that need subduing, things like that. Uh, I can see that working. Uh, I believe that is, that's some kind of a metal, and you can see that that is screwed into the frame there. You can see that there's obviously a safety right here on that side of the knife. If you're a lefty, might be, you know, a little harder to access, but same goes with the auto. You're just going to have to use your index finger rather than your thumb. Still works. Still works. Um, other features worth talking about. Uh, the clip itself, I think it's fine. Kind of scoops out right there. It's uh, not super deep, but honestly, I think it's totally fine. And obviously, I didn't point it out. I didn't mention it, but that's a big lanyard hole there, too. So addressing deployment, pretty good. Pretty good for an auto. I've seen faster, but it's pretty good. Lockup, 
I've also seen that on a lot of these plunger lock um, autos that you do have a little bit of front to back play on them, particularly after the use I put this through uh, to test it out, carving some of that wood, slicing a bunch of cardboard, all of that by the way, it just tore through. Even the paper, the paper I was kind of shocked by, especially with the serrations. You know, it's S30V, but uh, it does have kind of an obtuse edge to it, but man, it tore through that paper like it was butter. I mean, gosh, it performed great. Cardboard, did a fantastic job slicing up some cardboard. Uh, felt like it's, a, you know, just a great utility knife. Then again, digging into the wood that I was carving away at, it was a little bit of pine. Also just performed really well. I felt like those teeth were just, <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're behaving like teeth and they're tearing and shredding that uh, that pine. What can we critique on this knife? Well, I could say it's a little bit thick, but on the other hand, that's good for grasping really well for the type of work you want to do with it. And also for gloved hands. Having a nice thick knife is going to be good. It fills my hand quite well with a little extra hanging out down here at the bottom, which again is a good thing. The weight on it, I don't know, we could potentially hit it for the weight, which is 4.7 ounces, but that's really not bad at all, considering what you get here. Uh, 4.7, that's under five, and that's, I don't know, I think that's actually pretty dang good. It's not much of a hit at all right there. Um, I don't know, you could say that it's just not a super sexy knife, and I would agree with you there. I can show you some others here in a second that I think are pretty dang sexy, but uh, ergonomically it's great, functionally it's great. What's the, what's the issue? I don't know, man, there's just, I'm trying to find some things to critique and like tell you that I don't like about this knife. Maybe I could say the safety protrudes a little too much, but once again, with gloved hands, that's gonna be a very good thing. I could say that the button protrudes a little too much, but once again, gloved hands, that's an extremely good thing. So, gosh, I mean, given the role that this is intended for, that of military, potentially police, I actually think this is like a really good knife, guys. I think it's great for what it is. Price, what does it come in? I think the MSRP is 220 ish And uh, where are you gonna find this? I think the lowest price I've seen is about 150. And I'll try to get, leave a link down below for the, uh, the lowest price I've found for it. S30V, USA construction, USA made, guys. Made in Portland, Oregon. G10, very well put together, good weight. Is it a little less sexy than some models? And let's get into that now. Yes, it is. Particularly this one right here. Benchmade 4300, just the sexiest doggone auto I can think of. Sexiest auto I've ever had, ever handled, I think. I love it. Dang sexy, man. Good looking knife. Really good looking knife. Um, this one's kind of like the other, you know, the ugly stepbrother in comparison. But dang is it functional, right? Uh, here's a really cheap one, the Boker AK74. Very cheap. I don't know, it's not better looking, I don't think, than that. It's kind of, you know, quirky looking in some ways. But um, yeah, it's it's inexpensive is kind of the main draw for this one. One more bench made, this one right here. The Ambit Extras push button, auto, APB. Um, that guy is a little better looking, but not really, not by much. The blade shape is a little nicer to me. That's about it, that's about it. I can, all I can say in regards to this knife is it's maybe not the prettiest auto I've seen. But short of that, the price is pretty good, the function is fantastic, and um, it's made in the USA. What else do you need? And a pretty dang good price too. Uh, that's about it guys. It's performed really well for me. I've EDC this a fair bit. I had no complaints really about it. And that's the Gerber Propel Downrange Auto Knife and that's my review of it. I'm a late Boy Scout. I appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for much more. We'll see you on the next one. If you can get it for as low as 50 or so dollars, what a steal. A great knife. And maybe 65 is what you're going to find it for otherwise, which is also still a very good price. Uh, talking about a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about some of the materials. 